So we got another Muslim terrorist in the White House. Great. Stop it. 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 No! The following program that you're about to see is based on actual real life events that may prove too damning for politically correct audiences. If you're going to be offended by any of what you'll see shortly, then what the hell are you doing on my channel? Nonetheless, the following is purely for educational, informational, and comedic purposes only. In other words, don't be a stupid shillery, okay? Be a trumpeter. <laughs> <laughs> I don't I don't mean to include this on the dick of the week segment here but this absolutely deserves mentioning and and look look I don't guys listen to me I don't mean to nitpick with you guys over at EA Sports or Electronic Arts or whatever you call it but um that is inexcusable okay you had one vowel in that four letter word and you didn't use it instead you replaced it with something that looks like an a but it's actually an o see okay okay let me let me, let me explain this to you okay guys listen look at this tell me what you think is wrong with this when i when i read this out winter berries Bless Mizzlestone to get warm and comfortable. I mean, I, I get that the person who wrote that tagline below the headline is probably, like me, mentally challenged. Probably a bit more on the retarded category or intellectually disabled or whatever you call it anymore. Because, see, I don't... I don't care much for the term intellectually disabled because that doesn't cut it. Back in the days of pre-PC world, of pre-political correctness, they called it exactly what it was, mental retardation. I know because I lived in a group home once. Now, here's, now I, I want to, <laughs> okay. I want to I want to point this out to you guys. <laughs> All right. Winter berries. Bless Mistlestone to get warm and comfortable. I mean, were they were they trying to pull my leg here when they did that, or or I mean, <sighs> obviously this has to be a practical joke because because the guy who wrote the tagline below the title obviously knew what he was doing when he did this he he wanted to let's just say he wanted to be a comedian and confuse the word warm which is used to describe something that heats up or gets hotter with a scotty too hottie finisher called the worm the worm as in scotty too hottie Jumping up and down, doing his thing like a worm, and and doing it on his finisher on one of his opponents in front of about 20,000 people in an arena. So, but but like I said, I don't I don't mean to nitpick. I just wanted to point that out. By the way, I fixed it for you. You're welcome. <laughs> of the week.
Don't act like a bitch. Guy builds a utopia for mice. It all goes to hell. There's a video of a guy farting for about 45 seconds. Holy crap, Brownie! What the hell? What did you eat? <laughs> wow. Everybody, I want you to listen to me very, very carefully. This is the family that will be responsible for killing millions of more people over the next 10 years. These are the Sacklers. And as their name implies, they are miserable sacks of dog shit. This family, allegedly consisting of an intramural burial of billionaires and literal sacks of shit, hence what their name implies, started the opioid epidemic way back in the mid to late 90s. And it all started with this man named Dr. Robert Sackler. This man developed the same thing that would lead to hundreds of thousands of people dying of overdoses on it, and I'm talking about Oxycontin. Now, I know what you're thinking. I know what you're thinking. But, but, but these people seem so innocent. They look so happy. Yeah, but behind their smiles, behind their smiles, lies an unfathomable amount of evil in just one of them alone. The five of them put together are the reason that Big Pharma is the enemy of the people. And they're probably responsible for influencing Pfizer, they influenced Pfizer to develop another product, and I'm just speculating here, called Zoloft. The same Zoloft that has been linked to so many people having these unnatural reactions that had they been on any other medicine but Zoloft and Oxycontin would never have happened because the medicine that they would take in, unlike Zoloft and Oxycontin, are unmistakably, without a doubt, effective in preventing their bodies from reacting in such a way that they act unnaturally. People, the Sacklers are useless, miserable, terrible, despotic pieces of shit. They are sacks of dog shit, and I'm not gonna say that they deserve to die but Dr. Robert Sackler died of old age in 2017, and thank God that he's burning in hell now. Let's see if we can do that with the rest of the family, huh? 
I mean, you know, you know, just for shits and giggles. Not that it's going to matter or anything, not that it means anything, but if we could get his family arrested, tried, and convicted of killing hundreds of thousands of people since 1996, that would be great. That would be absolutely f***ing great. Because I'm telling you right now, if there were ever a candidate or a group of thereafter responsible for a death sentence, the Sacklers would be right up there at the top of the list, along with the Clintons and the Obamas and every single Democrat in Congress and all over this country. Because not a single one of them are worth any freaking thing. They are not worth a dime. They're not worth two cents in a country that has been reduced to shit when they killed it. Let me make that perfectly clear. Let me make that absolutely clear to you. Understand? Okay, next subject. This comes from the Good News Network. Goodnewsnetwork.org, I believe. So, while everyone in Congress, minus the President and Vice President, of course, because they're the most mature of the bunch of them, there is a kid, a 12-year-old kid, Liam Hannon, the founder, the owner, and operator, and CEO, and chairman, of his own company, his own, he's 12 years old and he already owns his own lunch delivering company. Liam's Lunches of Love. We'll just call that law for short. Not, not that I have to go there, but fuck it. He's delivered over 2,000 free lunches. They're all free. He's delivered 2,000 free lunches to his homeless Cambridge community in Massachusetts. Guess what he told his local reporters? He told them, and, and this is, this is, this is really, really, this is what really gets me. In a time where there seems to be so much negativity sometimes you have to turn to a 12 year old to lead the way now is that not a benevolent kind-hearted kid if ever you saw one because if it's not you probably need to check into a psych ward or dig yourself six feet under the ground and bury yourself alive because that, that's a great kid. People, I cannot in any way stress this enough. When a 12 year old is more mature than the entire mainstream media and the entire government and the entire deep state combined, you know there is a serious fucking problem. By the way, they will never cover it. They will never cover it. And you know why they won't cover it? <coughs> Watch side. <coughs> Sackler. <coughs> Clinton. <coughs> FBI. <coughs> Russia. You understand? They will never cover this. Simply because they won't allow themselves to. Now, I don't, I don't understand this, man. There are 12-year-old kids who are delivering free lunches to their homeless communities, starting up their own businesses, and bringing positivity to a world that is 100% negative. And meanwhile, the MSN's going, <laughs> the Democrats go, 
They're just screaming, Trump, 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 Russia, Russia, Russia. Shut the fuck up. You know? If you acted more like this guy and acted a lot like yourselves, we wouldn't be having this fucking problem, right? My God, man. And I know my voice just cracked. Don't at me. Because this kid is a grade A freaking genius. This is a genius. I can't even stress it enough. Oh. When a 12-year-old kid is smarter than the entire government put together and all of its enterprises and all of its extensions, you know your country's in deep freaking shite. And it's dung as fuck that a 12-year-old kid has to be smarter than every single person in Congress put together minus the president and his cabinet and his vice president. Because Trump and Pence and his cabinet are the best cabinet that any human being could afford. And God bless the Trumps. God bless the Pences. Because without 12-year-olds like Liam Hannon, we wouldn't even exist right now. We'd all have killed ourselves a long time ago. Luckily, there are people like him that exist. By the way, the media will never cover this. <laughs> Rick Wilson, or Rich Wilson, I should say. Rick Wilson is my um, relative, my close relative. Here's my but you already get it. So, so Rich Wilson came up with this genius freaking post that he sent to me on 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 Messenger. <laughs> huh. A Muslim, a transvestite, a rapist, and Satan walk into a bar. <laughs> I legit laughed when I saw this. When I saw this for the first time, I laughed and I lolled so damn hard. <laughs> So, so I decided, I decided to come up with a trio of sequels to this. cross-dresser, a cross-dresser, I should say, a homosexual and his bitch walk into a bar. Oh my god. Now, okay, if, if you thought, if you thought that was bad, <laughs> I miss this, man. Okay. If, if you thought that was bad, take <laughs> a jackass, a forever first tranny, a buff, and Hitler's dog. Look at the came up with this on the fly and this is just the second one we haven't even gotten to the last one yet oh my god this is completely insane oh i'm about to have a freaking heart attack in a minute
Okay. So, so, we, we got something here. You know, Rich, Rich Wilson said to me after I posted him my versions of this that I'm having way too much fun with this, and then he had a laughing emoji. <laughs> An illegal immigrant, a soy boy named Mike Robinson, a wannabe porn star, a major fraud. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god. Oh. I can't shit anymore, man. What is this? Oh. I swear to god, if that's not a Thomas Jefferson moment, I don't know what the hell is. Or maybe it's an Andrew Jackson moment, I don't know. Richard Nixon moment, maybe? Andrew Johnson maybe? I don't know. Make what the hell you want of it. I don't care anymore. Just, just... Okay, we'll just... God, man, I, I, I'm I, still trying to process this. This is... This is... Cr don't act like a bitch. <laughs> okay, let me, let me just tell you something, alright? All right, hear me out. Hear me out. If you're going to vote for a Democrat, what you need to do is look yourself in the mirror, realize the error of your ways, and say to yourself, Stop it! Stop it! Stop it! Stop it. Stop it. Stop it. Stop it. Stop it. Stop it. Okay? It's not that hard. A fucking dog can do that. Please. For the love of fuck. Vote Republican in 2020 next year. Or either three things. One. Stay at home and masturbate to Kamala Harris and Bill Clinton. Two. Go get some professional freaking help to solve your Trump derangement syndrome. Or three, do us all a favor and just shut the up. Or you could just bypass those three options and just. Bail out! Bail out! Bail out! Bail out! Bail out. E -E 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 you know? This is Kevin the Skull Anderson. Have a good one. Stop it! 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 How about no? And now a preview of the upcoming documentary from Skull Media Enterprises. Entitled Jefferson's Mistake, other than to fill time, of course, because this episode was a little fucking short. Have fun with that. Going to Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the latest shockumentary. And this one, believe it or not, is the most shocking one of all so far. Now, I say so far because there are going to be others that are more shocking than this one. Okay. So, you people under, do you people have any idea, do you understand the image that you are being shown right now? The very image that you are being shown right now. Friday, June the 18th, the year 1812. The same year of which inspired a man named Pieter Ilyich 
Tchaikovsky to write his infamous overture that centered around the war that happened between that year and 1815. Meanwhile, the guy who started that war was not a person from Russia, was not a person from France. Guess who started the War of 1812? Your eyes are not deceiving you, ladies and gentlemen. The person who started the War of 1812 is, of course, former President Andrew Jackson. The man who killed Thomas Jefferson's creation that would have saw the country soar to heights unparalleled even by the standards of Alexander the Great some centuries before. But because of what Andrew Jackson did on that fateful day, Friday, June the 18th, 1812, when he let the Brits burn down the White House, when he knew it was balderdash, he let the Brits in anyway. And meanwhile, meanwhile, he could have instead, he could have just let a hundred thousand of his own American troops come in to war the Brits off. Because there really weren't that many of them compared to the people that were in this country that were in the military at that time. Hundreds of thousands of them. But Andrew Jackson went against James Madison's order to bring the troops to the capital, Washington, D.C. And instead of bringing them there to war the Brits off, he let them say, ah, you can do whatever you want. I don't need you. That's how the first White House was burned down that led to the one that we see today. The first one, of course, we will never see. And I will tell you why. It is so simple. It has been proven time and again in many different ways. Prior prophets like Myron C. Fagan, a playwright, like Nostradamus, a seer, like Einstein, and, and so many other people before or since them have warned us about this. They have tried to help us avoid this, but we wouldn't listen to them. And because of that, this great nation that could have been far greater has officially now become da, 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 21st century Nazi Germany. Yes, that's right. It's a 21st century modern day Nazi Germany, except it's not World War II anymore. And 1945 and Adolf Hitler died 75 or so years ago. But the person pulling the strings in America are the entire Democratic Party, which are fully and almost entirely inspired by a man who also happened to be the very right-hand stooge, the child stooge of the man that was Adolf Hitler. I'm talking about George... Soros. And and by the way, you wonder why everything's going to hell. Do you do you know why everything's going to pieces in a handbasket? Well guess what? Now you know why. And I'm going to talk to you guys about it for the next two hours, and you people are going to see personally the very reasons as to why humanity is going to hell in a handbasket. And I don't mean metaphorically or literally. I mean that from a historical standpoint because it's become as if Christ given his life up for us on a cross on Calvary on a crucifix somewhere around 2,000 years ago meant absolutely nothing. You would think, right? The world's greatest nation, the United States of America, we the people, the same nation that stupidly and retardedly elected an illegal immigrant whose parents smuggled him here from Kenya, which is not a part of the United States, by the way, 
although it may be in any other dimension aside from this one. They elected a man named Barack Hussein Obama II, actual real identity, Barry Sotoro, to lead them to the slaughter, and boy, did he deliver on that. Holy Jesus. The same man that killed our nation was also the same man who killed our nation 190 years later, just in a different form. Whoever said that the spirit of Andrew Jackson didn't live in virtually every single Democrat in D.C., in New York, in California, in the hate groups that have fueled the Democratic Party and entirely funded them, including ISIS, Antifa, the Taliban, Al-Qaeda, some of the members of the Republican Party that actually turned out to be Democrats disguised as Republicans, and dare I say it, the World Health Organization, who, as you know, was founded by one George Soros and is being run alongside his son, Alexander Soros, who is of the bloodline of Hitler. You people know damn well that I am not making this up, because it is the God's honest truth, and it is because I'm not the only person to say this. I'm not the first to say this. Will I be the last? Of course not. I won't even be close to being the last. As a matter of fact, millions of you probably right now are saying the exact same things that I'm saying to you just in less politically incorrect ways. To meet a social justice warrior standard! Ah, let's go for the social justice warriors! Since when has that helped? Absolutely never. It has helped no one at any time ever. Nobody has benefited from social justice Nobody will ever benefit from social justice and its so-called warriors, which are actually Rothschild-appointed chess pawns in the Luciferian interdimensional summit that is the Committee of 300. And yes, I did just quote a song from a famous Norwegian black metal band. And they're actually a lot more cinematic than another Norwegian black metal band neither of which I'm going to name because you know who they are. Obviously. Now, on to the main topic of our evening. Why don't we now get to the reasons as to why democracy died on that fateful day sometime in the morning or afternoon of that day in 1812 and has been dying a billion deaths for the better half of 210 years. Let's get started. Okay? Because believe me, you people aren't going to want to miss this. Guarantee you this isn't going to get any more than 50 views on my channel, but it's going to open some eyes. A whole lot of eyes. A great deal of eyes! And you, my fellow YouTubers, my fellow YouTube subbers, the very people who helped you guys become what we are, you're going to be the first to hear it. Because we here at Skull Media Enterprises don't just talk about ourselves, we talk about the people we're supposed to help, namely yourself. We try to reach out to you. Name, of course, that's not to be confused with a show called Reaching Out to the Unfamous, which is a web show that I produce on my channel, by the way. By the way, I'm, I'm the one man behind Skull Media Enterprises because I have the balls and the nuts and the stones to speak the God's honest truth. When no one else will speak it exactly as it's meant to be spoken, who is the one man who for the last five and a half years stood up to the plate and told the God's honest truth for what it is. You guessed it. 
Kevin the Skull Anderson. Yours truly, me. And I will continue telling these troops until I am dead. Let's get started. No! It's just not easy. Jesus Christ, the United Nations, was created to become the housing for the Illuminati Great Conspiracy. 